Here is an example of using decision tree. Uh, assume or imagine an investor wants to figure out which segments in the market the investor should invest in. In this example, consider three possible scenarios for stock market conditions. Either we have a growth situation as shown here, or we have a stable scenario or recession. And assume that the probabilities of these three scenarios are provided as shown here, 30% chance for growth, 30% chance for a stable market, and 40% chance for recession. Now we have four segments to invest in, bonds, consumer staples, uh, which are essentials, pharmaceutical, and then high tech. And the corresponding return on annual, annual return on investment given the market condition for these four segments are provided in each column. Uh, for instance, when we are in a growth situation for the market, it is assumed in this example that investment in bonds would result in 1% annual return on your investment and 4% for consumer staples, 8% for pharmaceutical, and then finally 16% for high tech segment. So now with this information, we are going to use decision tree to figure out that uh, which investment in terms of which segment to invest in is going to be statistically optimal. To do that, uh, we have a decision node and uh, we have four decisions to make, four possible decisions basically. One decision to make, four possible decisions. So imagine we have uh, the situation of either investing in bonds, so that would be investing in bonds, or investing in consumer staples in this example. Or we can invest in, say, pharmaceutical, pharma. Or we can invest in high-tech segment. OK. So now, if you invest in bonds, there are three possible outcomes that can happen. There are th three possible chances. Either we are in growth, or stable, or recession. So you have. Um, a return of 1% for growth. You have a return of 1.5% when you're dealing with stable market, and you have a return of 2% when you're dealing with recession. If we are, if we invest in consumer staples, same three chances exist. If it is a growth scenario, we end up with 4% return annual on our investment, 3% for the case of stable market, and then we have negative 4% for the case of recession. Same for pharmaceutical. Our investment For our investment, there are three possible chances. So either we have 8% return for growth, 4% for stable market, and negative 7% for the case of recession. And lastly, for high tech, there are, again, three possible chances. So we have either 16% uh, return when we are dealing with a growing market, 3% return under a stable situation, and then negative 14% return for the case of uh, recession. Okay, so because we have the probabilities of the three possible scenario in the market, then we can compute the expected value of return. So say, uh, if we go and invest all our money in bonds, we can compute the expected value of invest uh, our return in bonds. And that would be just uh, uh, computing the weighted average of our return. So 1% in growth, but the growth happened with a property of 0.3. So 0.3 times 1% plus, then we have 0.3 for the stable scenario times 1.5. And finally, we have 0.4 times 2%. So if you add up, 
In this case, we get 0.3 plus 0.8, so it will be 1.1, and then we have um, 0.45, so 1.55% expected average of return if we uh, invest in bond. Okay, so that's the expected value of our return. Now, if we invest in, let's say, consumer staple, then the same thing. Let's compute the expected value or weighted average return. So 0.3 times, this time we have 4% return in, under the growth situation, and then 0.3 stable, we have 3% return, and then 0.4 in recession, we have negative 4 return. So if you, if you compute this, you're going to get 1.2 plus 0.9, so that's 2.1, and then this guy is negative 1.6. So 2.1 negative 1.6 is going to give you 0.5% um, for expected value of return uh, for investment in consumer staples. Let's do expected value computation for investment in pharma, pharmaceutical. So we do the, uh, again, the weighted average calculation. So it will be 0.3 times 8% plus 0.3 for a stable market times 4% 4, 4 plus 0.4 times negative 7% return for recession. So it's 2.4 plus 1.2 is 3.6 and then 3.6 minus 2.8 so um, we're going to get 0.8 percent expected value of return and finally we have expected value of investment in high tech So the same thing, let's compute the weighted average return. So 0.3, that's the chance of having a growth in the market. There is 16% return for us annually. And then 0.3 chance of a stable market, 3% chance of return. And then 0.4 for recession, and then it's negative 14% return. So if we do that, this thing here is uh, 4.8 plus 0.9, that's 5.7. And then this guy here is negative 5.6. So we have 5.7 and minus 5.6. So it's going to be just this expected value of return. And you can see that when you compare these four expected value of return in this imaginary example, the numbers are not real representation of what really happens in a stock market under the growth stable recession or just this table is just an example here. So with this simple scenario, not having any other information available, then the expected value return computation in our de simple decision tree shows that the best chance on average, statistically speaking, is investment in bond because statistically speaking, it's going to give us a better return overall in the long run in this example. So uh, basically it means that in our decision tree, investment in bonds is going to be the one that we're going to select as our choice of investment. Hope this example is helpful in terms of um, illustrating how a simple decision tree can be used to make a statistically uh, optimal decision for investment.